Hi, thank you for joining me for this NovaCore training session. In this video, we will take an in-depth look at how to create your own framework using NovaCore's CYO. After you log into NovaCore, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Tools and Config. Once you click on there, simply click on Framework Setup. When you click on Framework Setup, you'll be able to see all the frameworks that are in the system. Now, it doesn't matter if they're frameworks that have been pre-created by NovaCore or if they're frameworks that you've created yourself, they'll all appear in here. Just like when you hover over the Start here, you'll be able to see all the frameworks. This is pretty much the setup of each one of those frameworks. You can see I've already created one there called the CYO Framework and placed two different sets of standards underneath the one framework group. It's the first thing that you're going to want to do is click New Framework Group. Once you've clicked New Framework Group, you see it shows up at the bottom and you'll be able to give it a name. So for this one, we're going to call it our Test Framework. And then we can give it a description. And then, of course, an icon. So you can set any icon you want to in there. When you click Set Icon, it'll bring up all your different logos that you have or any different logo that you want to put in there. You can pretty much put any format, you know, a GIF, a TIF, a bitmap, JPEG, PNGs. We'll take the lot. I'll just put in the NovaCore logo. And then there you see we've set up our framework group. What we want to do is actually create a new framework underneath that group. You can see here the SNR, so they're the standards for the National Vet Regulated RTOs, have initial and continuing registration and any VRQA guidelines. You've also got uh, initial and continuing registration for AQTF there. So we're going to do the same. So underneath our test framework group, we're going to click new framework up here. And you'll see that it's placed a new framework in. We can actually call this framework whatever it is that we want. So we can call it, you know, ISO 9001. So I'm just going to call it. So any of those people out there who are ISO registered uh, organizations, you can put in your ISO frameworks here. Even if you're uh, following ISO 14001, it's fine. So I can actually click new framework again and add a second one under there. You can see it shows up there. And that's where I would put my... 14,001. Okay, so you see I've got two different frameworks now. I'm going to go back to the 9,001 and I'm going to add a few sections because the first section can be um, various parts, you know, some part one to part three and, and so on like, uh, like that. You can also split up the sections into the headings. So, you know, a lot of the time uh, if you're standard like, for instance, under the AQTF, some of the standards, like standard one, doesn't actually need any documents linked to it. It's just telling you this is standard one and these are the elements. So in, in essence, you could actually put that as a heading if you wanted to, a section heading. But as we've got it here, we've actually split it up. The two headings are conditions and standards. So if you have a very similar outlay, you can do the same. So here we're going to call this one conditions. And then we can cre even create a new header, call it standards. Okay, so it's nice and easy. Now we can actually place elements underneath our conditions by clicking this plus arrow here. This plus arrow will insert an item at the same level that you're currently highlighted with your mouse. Okay, the next one across will insert it at the next level down. So for instance, if I click this one, it's going to give me a brand new item, which I can then drag up and place into whichever one I want. So, I, for instance, I want that under conditions. So under conditions, I've now got my new item. This new item, I can call it condition one. And then we can see condition one. If condition one then breaks off into substandards, we can then use the next level down. So the next level down is actually going to place something inside condition 1 and we can simply write condition 1.1. It's that easy. You can even go down further again if condition 1.1 has an A section, so A through B to C to D example. We can then go condition 1.1 A and 
we can go down again if you wanted to I'm not sure that many frameworks do go down that far but you can if you like and when you want to return back to the level before so for instance if we want to go to 1.2 we simply click on 1.1 and insert at the same level as that so then this is where the new item is and we would call that condition 1.2 so as you can see, it's quite easy to set that hierarchy up. So underneath our conditions, if we minimize that, open that up, condition 1, condition 1.1 and 1.2, and then 1.1a. We'll do exactly the same for the standards if we were going to set it up that way. If you wanted to add condition 2, really easy. You just click on the same level as the condition 1, so that one there, and then add it at the same level. So it comes up there, and we will call that condition condition 2 and there you go these tick boxes next to it indicate whether you want documents linked to those particular standards so whether they show up in the traffic light system condition 1 and condition 2 may not actually have any documents linked to them but may need documents linked to their substandards so all you simply do is untick it if you don't want to include that in your compliance check and leave it ticked if you do want to include it in the compliance check okay a lot of the time we don't want to include the headings into the compliance check because it's just a simple heading but the option is there if you want to okay so it's very simple we're just going to add a few to the standards now so we're first we're going to insert it at the highest level possible and we're going to call it standard one we're going to add another one at the same level call it standard two and we're also going to just add a third one so you can add as many standards as you want into your framework there is no limit the good thing about it here is you can actually add a description for each one on the right hand side as well if the description is similar to the one above so if the description for 1.1 is the same as one but just with a little bit extra you can actually include the previous levels item description and then add a little bit more on your own It'll give you a preview on what it's like just underneath. Explanatory notes are, pr are very good to use. A lot of the frameworks come with explanatory notes explaining exactly what they mean for each condition or each standard or each requirement. If those explanatory notes aren't there, you can write your own. So you can actually explain from your own organization perspective what you require for each standard or condition. They do not have to be the explanatory notes that come with the standards. You can place your own in there. So I've added these three standards at the bottom. I'm not putting descriptions in for this demonstration, but typing them in is on the right-hand side here, and it's actually very easy. Standard three, we're going to actually add a substandard into it. So we're going to call it 3.1, 3.1. And then we're going to add another substandard under that and call it 3.1a. And then now you're going to see after we finish how it's going to show up in our framework. You're also going to see these play and stop buttons, it looks like on the left hand side here of all your frameworks. This indicates whether this framework is displayed or not. As you can see, I have two stop lights, or as I call stop buttons, on the left hand side here of my AQTF framework, and it's not ticked as active on the actual framework grouping. So that's the first thing you want to check. Okay? So under your CYO framework here, I've ticked it as active, Krykos is active, and also my GTO is active. I don't want the AQTF framework to show up, so I simply tick, I untick active, and then all we do is make sure that both of these have the stop button pushed next to them, because if we push it again, it'll actually make it active. So we're going to make that stop, just because I don't want the AQTF framework to show up, and as you can see when I hover over here, it doesn't show up in the list there. So at the moment, we want to make sure that our test framework is active. So click on the actual framework group. Go to both of your sets of standards. I haven't put any in for 14,001. So what I'm going to do is push stop on that one and just make 9,001 active. Okay. And then you're going to click the tick up here. That's going to accept all the changes. And it's going to actually make your framework show up straight away. And as you can see, there's my test framework at the bottom. It's got my logo and I can click on it and click view framework up here 
and now I'm in Novacore's traffic light system. And you can see all the standards and conditions broke down and all their substandards as well. So conditions to condition one and two and also standard to standard 3.1. So it's really easy to use the Create Your Own Framework. Any intent, key actions and responsible persons can be placed in there and your explanatory notes will show up there. Thanks a lot for joining me for this particular training session. Uh, be sure to check out some more of our training sessions at www.novacore.com.au or uh, head to our FAQ page, faq.novacore.com.au.